So now that we have our four masks squared away, um, it's time to start actually making our material. The first thing I want to do is take care of our color. And for that, we're going to use a gradient map, actually two gradient maps. And I'm going to go to Google, and we're going to pick up a couple of gradients using the gradient editor and the pick gradient tool. Now, I like this one because it's got like the two colors that I want. So I'm going to get a gradient from this lighter area for my light wood and then I'm going to get a gradient from this darker area for my dark wood. That'll be my light gradient and this will be my dark gradient. Actually I want a, a bit more in there so I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to make the line just pick up more things and I can always add points to it later but th those are two good basic colors. This is going to be our rings and this is going to be the sort of general wood color. In fact, I think I want this a little bit lighter. I'm looking at the two of these next to each other. So I'm going to come back in to my gradient editor. And I'm going to pick up like from a slightly lighter area. That's probably better. Yeah, I like those two colors better together. That looks like it matches more. And now it's time to start applying our color grain mask to what we have going on here. This shallow texture is going to go with the lighter material and this deep one is going to go with the darker material. And this gives us the sort of the beginnings of our, our color. So that looks pretty good. We're getting some variation within within this that's coming off of that white noise that we made and then we have the same thing going on in here. Uh, it's probably on the light side. We'll, we'll worry about the colors later. Let's just hook it up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of blend nodes and I'm going to sort of set up this scenario where each one is getting blended on itself and then I'm going to highlight each one of those noodles and I'm going to give it its own hue saturation lightness node. And then we're going to take our color grain mask and we're going to use it to mask out these two variations of the color. And one of these, I mean we can do both of them. I like to do both because this way I have it there if I need it. You, know, you only really need to do one of them. But if we ever wanted to darken the whole thing up, it's already set up for us. And now I can just come in here and slightly change that coloring. And it gives it a level of depth that goes beyond just the white noise. But it's only being applied to the color. This isn't going to affect any of the other outputs. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Again, it's giving us more variety. And once we have these guys set up, then we get another blend node and take their results and apply our rings mask to it. And right now we have the rings as black and we have they're being masked out of the foreground, which is our light material. And there you have it. We've got this, these grainy colors that are now being masked and blended together using that mask. So why don't we go ahead and hook this up to our color. Before we finish with our color though, I do want to do one more thing to it to give it even more sort of variation and variety. And I'm going to go back to the library and I'm going to get a gradient. And I'm going to get another, in fact, I'm going to copy this gradient map because I, I actually want my colors really similar and I'll adjust them slightly. Uh, for starters, I want it, I want much, far fewer points because I want this to be a very, very subtle gradient that moves between 
sort of larger areas. And because we're tiling this texture, and I'm going to be overlaying it on top of our original colors here, you want to make sure that the color on this edge and the color on this edge are exactly the same. Otherwise, you're going to get this dark line. It doesn't really matter which is which. I think I'm going to go with the darker one. So I'm going to make a copy of it here just by clicking on that. Oops, didn't do quite enough. Just by clicking on that field. I'm making another point. I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to replace it with this one. So I have the exact same color at either end here. Now it's going to tile correctly for me. And then we're just going to get another blend node and, and we can find a blend that we like for here. So let's try multiply. It's a little dark. That's kind of nice. It's pale. I think I like the screen. Let's see what soft light is. I think I'll go with soft light. Now I'll go with the screen. I like this one. And we'll put that in there. We don't have anything showing up in here because our ambient occlusion is black. So temporarily at least, let's just get that hooked up. Yeah, so that looks so far so good. Let's move on. I'm going to draw a frame around these. And we may as well take care of this ambient occlusion while we're up here. And we're going to we're going to follow the same idea. So we're going to get a blend node. Each one of these is going to get its own levels node to take care of you know, the specifics for that particular output, and they're all going to be masked against this one. And since, you know, we're only using this for the color, so we don't have to do that in between thing for these ones. And I don't want it terribly occluded. Let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. And we can set this down. I'm setting this right now to what I want my polished surface to be. Because remember, we're going to have that one input parameter that's going to handle all of these various things for us. So I want the most polished state throughout. Or, you know, I'm just being consistent. So this way I have them all set to one. It'll just make my life easier later on. This is too much. I want this much lighter because I don't want the polished floor to have all that much occlusion to it. I just want to kind of highlight what's going on. And we'll now put this in the appropriate output, get rid of that one, and label it. Next, we have the normals. We're going to do this slightly differently. I'm going to get a normal for each one of my wood grain types, if you will. So we'll have one for the shallow one, and we'll have one for the deep one. And I'm going to put them in the same order. But I also want to have a normal that's going to correspond with my, my rings. And for that one, I'm not going to use this regular normal. I'm going to get a height to normal. Is that? No, I don't think that. No, that's not the one I want. I want this one. So that's height to normal. And this is going to take a height map and it's going to convert it to a normal map depending and you're going to and you can give it the information that it needs as far as how deep that normal is. So in in that sense it functions very much like the ambient occlusion node. And I'm going to do it off of this last node. And this is going to give me this insane normal, which I will then bring down considerably. Let's see how that looks hooked up. I'll leave it like that for now. It'll probably have to come down a little bit further. And so because we have three of them, we're actually going to need two blend nodes. I'm going to use 
this one as my background and then I'm going to start with my shallow one and we're going to use the same mask that we used before and that's giving me that sha shallow grain on top of the overall rings normal and I'm going to use an overlay here we're going to take the result of this and use it as the background for our rougher normal only now we're going to actually have to invert this mask so we're going to get an invert grayscale and we're going to use that mask and we will overlay it and that is our normals hooked up let's see how they look I'm not entirely convinced because we're going to have to fool around with that I know I can just tell by looking at it yeah so this is supposed to be our polished floor and that's just very very bumpy so let's start with this one and bring it down so it's kind of barely there and this is our shallow one so even that is kind of too much even at one it's a little bit much so I'm going to bring that intensity down a bit and then this guy it's probably okay I might even bring it up a little bit it's kind of hard to tell with it being really shiny like this right now it'll probably have to come down some more but for now that's okay so let's put a frame around that and call it normal the height we're going to do it exactly like this ambient occlusion so we're going to get a blend node and two levels nodes and we have our shallow and we have our deep and we're blending them together using this mask again this is going to be crazy high but let's take a look just want to make sure that's my height yes and then the other thing we haven't done yet is we need to make sure that we have height set up in our renderer and to do that we go to materials default edit and in our height scale I'm going to set mine to one so now it's rendering out our heights and for the polished floor again that's really high this is probably what it would be at like the weathered stage because you, you're getting like really deep grooves in there but when it's polished you don't really see that so we need to take care of the the differential here actually I think that this part I think I'm gonna leave alone I'm, I'm kinda happy with that the only thing I'm gonna change is this I'm just gonna darken the whole thing up probably a little bit more and then we're gonna do the same thing here in fact I'm probably even gonna take more off the top let's see what that looks like yeah that's better so you, you're, you're kind of seeing some variation in the uh, in the heights but not a whole lot because it's a polished floor and we make a frame and next in line we have our roughness now with the roughness it's gonna be I mean just generally speaking I use an inverse here because for the most part your higher areas tend to be the things that get rubbed the most and they tend to be slightly smoother than your lower areas so before we do anything else I'm gonna get a couple of invert grayscales into which we're gonna plug in our shallow and rough information and then once we've got that information inverted then I'm gonna bring in my levels nodes and our blend and finally we get our mask so now we can adjust separately the roughness of the two different types of you know the, the top and the bottom so I want that more even overall 
And once I've done that, I'm going to correct for my shiniest version in here. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing down here. I want this a more even tone. It's probably okay. And then we just bring the whole thing down. I think I want to get rid of those blacks, though. I don't want any part of this completely black. Yeah, I think that's fine for now. We're going we're to be doing a lot of adjusting to that, obviously. I can already see that I want to bring down this normal for the for the smoother bits. That's probably better. Okay, so we're going to call this one done for now. And finally, we're going to do our specularity. So the specularity, when it's at its glossiest, is going to be very high. It's it's pretty much the inverse of, of what's going on with the roughness. So we want, I mean, I still, I think I still want, we still want to even these out as far as what's going on inside the actual material. And I, I, I really do, especially this smoother one, I, I don't want a lot of variation in here when it's, shiny and let's see how that looks again I think for now that's fine we'll we'll start to fine-tune it later on but our specularity is going to be always a lighter color than this roughness because when the roughness is low the specularity tends to be high So those are our basic sections done. And the only thing we have left to do now is to actually put some functionality in here by creating an input parameter and then applying it to a bunch of these nodes.